Hey guys, welcome back to once again a brand new modeling video in Maya 2018. Well, today we're going to be doing a secondary prop. Um, and this is something that you see in games all the time. It's a scaffolding setup, right? I think in the US it's called staging or uh, scaffolding, I'm not sure. But anyway, based on the picture, you know what I'm talking about, right? Now, it's not that difficult to model. However, it's kind of tricky to keep it low poly. And that's what this video is about, right? Let's check it out. Here we go. All right, guys, well, scaffolding is something you see all the time in games and movies and whatnot. Now, the big problem with this is if you want to do this in a highly detailed fashion, your poly count is going to go through the roof, right? So you really need to consider before you get started whether this is going to be a secondary prop somewhere in the background or something that is highly visible and in close up. Because if that's the case, it's a totally different modeling approach. It's going to be a much more high poly. And if you have a need for that, let me know, and I'll happily uh, do a couple of videos on that. But that said, this is going to be intended as a low poly prop. Now, uh, because of that, you need to keep in mind that every element we use is going to be uh, repeated a lot. OK, so we're going to start with our main tube. And for that, we'll take a simple polygon cylinder. And right now, my subdivision count is 20. I'm going to hit E to rotate and hold on J so it's lying flat. And you need to consider how low you can go where it's still believable, okay? So I'm going to hit Control A to open that up. We're going to go in here and let's start by going to 16. That's fine. 12, maybe even lower than that. Let's try 8. I think 8 is the lowest we can go. 6 will make it look a bit too square, so let's do 8, okay? Now, the caps, we're going to set that to 0. And we're going to go in here and we're going to right-click and go to Face. And I'm going to select this face and that face and delete them. Now, the problem is uh, when you want to have uh, some thickness in the pipe and you extrude it, you can have faces on the inside and you don't want that because of the face count. But what you can do, though, is double click on this edge and double click on this edge. Hit Control E to extrude. And let's uh, tweak that offset. Uh, not the offset. Let's tweak that thickness inwards to something like that. Right now, you don't have to do that, but you can. And if you really want to go fancy, you can, uh, you know, extend them inwards. But that's, I think, way too much detail. So we'll go with this. All right. So we've got our object. Now I'm going to right click the vertex and I'm going to drag like one section. Now let's give this some length. All right. And we'll just set up a basic scaffolding um, element. And you can take it from there. Okay. So I think the whole thing is still a bit big. So let's just uh, scale it down a bit and extend it. So this looks all right. And what I'm going to do is go to Modify and Center Pivot. So I can now hit W, hold down X, and snap it to the center of my grid. And there you go. All right. So we got one. All right. Still a bit thick, I think. So let's just uh, make that nice and thin. All right. Okay, so we got this. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate, W to move over, and let's consider what the thickness would be. Now, if you wanna be really exact about it, you can do measurements. I think this is pretty accurate, so that's okay. So I'm gonna select them both, and I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate, hit W to move up for my first level, if you will. Again, um, you know, proportions and so forth is really important. I think that looks okay, so I'm gonna hit Shift D and Shift D, and I think that's a good height. Now I need to borrow one of these elements, so I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate, E to rotate, hold on J. There you go. I'm gonna go to uh, Modify and Center Pivot, and snap this guy to the center of my grid. So hit W. Actually, it is the center of my grid, so what we'll do here is we'll take these two, go to Mesh and Combine, hit W to move, hold down X, there you go, that's much better. And then we'll take this guy, hit R, scale it in, have it stick out just a little bit, and let's move that out to the end here, to, I'd say that's about right. And I can snap it if I want, so I'll just snap it like this. And then what I'll do is I'll hit uh, Control D to duplicate, W to move over here, hold on X, snap it there. 
Let's do shift D so we'll get a new one. Hold on X once again. Snap it there just to get the same distance. And we'll hit control D again. Move that over. Hold on X and snap it. So that looks all pretty uniform, if you know what I mean. Problem is though that these tubes are cutting into the existing tubes and we don't want that of course. So they need to be slightly lower. So we're gonna bring them down. And to the extent that they are just about touching. Okay, so that looks all right. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna control D to duplicate. Let's move that down one level. Have to frame that in. Now let's hit Shift D and Shift D. And just check and double check to see if they look okay, but I think they do, yeah. And then the next one is to go and put in our vertical elements. So let's take one of these once again, Control D to duplicate, E to rotate, hold down J until we have that element. We're gonna hit W, we're gonna move that. And let's make sure this is spaced correctly. Hit four for wireframe mode. So we're gonna push it in like this. Okay. Let's make sure we got a good height. Let's do that from here. And we want the top to kind of stick out. So we're gonna take those and I would say push it up to about here. Again, I'll hold X to snap it, let's say to about here. And then we'll do the same in the bottom here. Like this. Now we have an object and it's positioned correctly. So we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate, W to move over, F to frame so we can see what's going on. There we go. And then we're gonna take both Control D to duplicate, W to move over, and let's put them on the outside here. Control D again, let's put these on the inside. Control D again, and there you go, after frame. Okay. That's a good starting point, but it's still uh, very, very basic as you can see. One thing that always helps to sell this is the foot stamp, if you will. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna take a, uh, another polygon cylinder. Let's pull this out and let's set that to, let's try five. I think five is okay. Yeah, five's right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bottom faces and get rid of those. So drag select and shift to drag select. And we'll just delete that. And then we'll go in here and we'll right click and go to vertex, drag select, hit R to scale that out, something like this. And then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna right click go to vertex, select that center vertex, go to edit mesh and, no, not poke, sorry. Edit mesh and chamfer vertices. And then we're gonna right click and go to face, just like this. Control E to extrude and W to pull up. Now I don't need that face on top there, so we're gonna delete. And let's see if we can get this to scale to proportion. Let's move that in. I have to frame that. So what I basically want is for this to be the foot stamp for these pipes right here. I have to frame that. And we're gonna kind of need to eyeball that a little bit, it looks like. The thing is, once you have one in place, it's easy to duplicate that. So it should be right there. After frame, there we go. So we've got one of those. So control D to duplicate, W to move over. Select them both, control D. Move that over, control D once again, W after frame. And one more time, 
Control D, move that down here after frame. Right, so now we've got stamps there everywhere. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in some cross sections and typically they will run from top to bottom. So we'll just uh, take one of these guys. We're gonna have to control D duplicate, E to rotate, hold down J. We need W to move them out, move that up. And let's position this guy correctly. It's gonna be about there, I would say. Let's have a look from this view. And we're gonna to need to tweak this guy a little bit. There's basically gonna be a resting on this pipe right here. So we're gonna move that over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit um, the insert key to move that pivot point just above that pipe right there. The insert key again. E to rotate, hold on J to pull it down. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna right click and go to vertex and we're gonna hit W and let's double click on this guy and make sure that we're moving in object orientation. So we're gonna move that way down here and we can adjust that height when we get there or that length. I'm just looking to see where that pipe is. So it's right there. Let's bring it in to about here, that looks fine. And then we've got the same issue up here. So we're gonna drag select. And let's make that a bit longer. That looks all right. So we got that pipe. And then of course we need one more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy. And we're gonna go to uh, modify and center pivot. Hit control D duplicate, hit E to rotate, hold down J and snap it and we're not quite there yet. We need to bring it back a little bit. So let's see if we can do that while we're looking at it right here. I think that's pretty close and we'll just tweak it manually a little bit. So we're gonna go to vertex and I'm gonna hit W, have that rest on this pipe right here and be about the same distance here. And then we'll do the same down here. We're gonna have that rest on that pipe. That looks about right. Okay, so that's not too bad. That's what you got so far. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to uh, display, uh, heads up display and poly count. Okay, so the whole thing right now is 936 faces which is not too bad, but we're not there yet, okay? So we got that, and then what you can do, of course, is put in some boards, and uh, we'll do that. We'll take a polygon cube. We'll bring that in here. Let's hit R to stretch that out. And again, it all depends on how um, detailed you want this to be, right? So let's push that in a bit, pull that out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit W and we're gonna bring this down. And if you really wanna sell this, then make sure that these boards are not perfectly straight because they will be more realistic. But again, that all cuts into your poly count, okay? So this is about right. Uh, I'm gonna hit W and I'm gonna move that over here. And I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate, W to move that over and then hit shift D and shift D and see if I can get all four in. Looks like we need to tweak a little bit. Hit R, scale it in a little bit. And then I'm just gonna hit W, push that in. And one way to work with the detail is to make sure that the spacing is not the same everywhere so this seems to be okay. So I'm gonna take these four, Control D to duplicate, and W to bring down, F to frame. Okay, that seems to be about right. 
and then what we'll do here is we'll just uh, move one of these boards a little bit and maybe that one too just so it doesn't look exactly the same control D once again we'll bring that in and then we'll hit shift D to do one more for our bottom section here and I got a, a pipe that's uh, going weird here let's uh, fix that that's this guy and we're gonna go to vertex drag select these bring that out here and it seems you've got the same issue here so let's do that here as well all right so we need to uh, change those boards up a little bit as before okay so let's say we've got so far for the entire thing uh 2064 we've got 1032 faces so a thousand face count is not bad for this now the thing is and this is something you need to consider uh but it's um you know kind of uh, uh, an important thing how these pipes are joined together now normally you've got clamps going on but if you put clamps on this you're going to run into the tens of thousands of poly counts easily right so one quick workaround could be and i'll just show you one example is to use a simple low poly sphere so you would go in here and you would set this to let's say maybe six or so six by six or even less let's try let's do five by five all right and what you could do is just uh, bring this in and uh, put that on as some sort of clamp type deal right now the problem with that is that when you do that it, it doesn't really look great and if you need that level of detail anyway then you're probably closer to a higher level of detail okay so but what you can do is just put something in there like this so from a distance, it looks kind of okay, but I wouldn't do it. I would probably just do this, right? So that's uh, basically it, guys. Um, easy peasy. Um, you can put in uh, additional elements, ladders. You can uh, combine these all you want. So if you have, let's say, a very large building, what you can do is go to, uh, let's do uh, mesh and uh, combine, control D to duplicate, W to move over, and that would be your second section shift d shift d and there you go you can work on an entire skyscraper or whatever okay and height wise same deal of course okay guys well that's all there's to it so hopefully you enjoyed this little video if you got any questions let me know as always and that said thank you very much for watching thank you for your support on my channel and see you guys next time bye Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.